satisfied with one win. <laughs> Uh, that's not that's not my um, that's not my goal for this career. No, uh, I think it's my first world champs. So I have to be pretty realistic. It's a great. I'm I'm not putting any excuse into that. Um, I'm aiming for the win, but it's a great platform to build on. Um, and yeah, I want to I want to be in the sport to race the absolute best. So the fact that this world champs is still a world champs, great. But I want to also race everybody who's not here in the future and still win. Because I'm on this show, it probably means I'm a professional triathlete. Um, yeah, I have come from a background with serving in the British Army as a physiotherapist, and I'm currently on the BMC Pro Tri team as well. Uh, I had just turned professional actually in 2019. Um, I was out watching my husband race, um, and so I experienced Kona firsthand as a spectator. It was maybe about a month before going out to Kona that I decided I wanted to do an Ironman. Um, so while I was in Kona, I was sort of training for my first Ironman. Um, so yeah, that's like, what, two and a half years ago. Um, so I wasn't even, I, wasn't, I hadn't even done an Ironman when Kona was on last. Uh, I started triathlon, like training for it in my free time uh, with work in 2015 when I joined the army. Um, there was a swimming pool at work and I thought, why not uh, get back into swimming? So I did a little bit of swimming as a kid, um, a couple of times a week with the local swim club. It was quite sort of sociable. Uh, and then I also did running, but my main sport was hockey, uh, like field hockey. Um, I did basketball, tennis. I basically did loads of team sports um, and also kept really fit with running and a bit of swimming. So then joining the army, I was like, cool, I'm gonna try to combine swimming, cycling, running a little bit and I started training for cycling, which I'd never done before. So yeah, 2015, 2016, and then um, I did my first middle distance sort of by accident um, in Canada where I was deployed with the army in 2018 and then turned pro 2019, so. You turned pro a year after you did your first race? Uh, middle distance. Yeah, so I worked with um, a coach when I was an age grouper and my whole first year of pro during COVID as well. Um, and he was called Damon Littlewood and he was a local bike shop guy in England. Um, and then in 2021, at the start of the year, so I've been with Bjorn Giesman um, for 14, 15 months or so now. Um, so I've been really privileged to like train with Patrick Langer and Boris Stein and all of their crew. So it's been a really good experience. Yeah, I'm still serving. And um, they're supporting me at the moment full time to, to focus just on uh, full time triathlon, which is obviously an absolute gift. And um, so I balance that with making sure that I give enough back to the army with like lessons that I'm learning from elite sport. And obviously, as you can imagine, uh, like physiotherapy and endurance sport, they're like completely twin. So it's a really symbiotic relationship. I guess I came in when Daniela Reif was was and I guess you can say she still is like the queen of the of the women's field so she's always been the, the idol for me um, but what I love about the, the women's field specifically is that there's so many women who are so passionate and honest about how hard the job is and and they're just inspirational like I draw a lot of strength from the friendships that I make and I sort of idolise every one of them who's honest about the journey and how hard they have to work to perform at this level. Yeah, I think, again, coming into the sport, there's been this era in the background of people saying things like, the perfect triathlon body, um, which was quoted just a couple of weeks ago from someone who used to be very good in the sport. And I think, I think it's something that has been so, uh, institutionalized to us in the sport whereas actually what we can see is that science and health is just as important as the of thinking that being light is always better um, we're seeing even at the moment that being on the fine fine line of being too light in terms of body fat percentage for you as an individual and having a bit of too much excess weight it's so tricky so body image is tied in with obviously body fat percentage for most people. Um, and I just think that health is the most important thing and everybody has a different body shape. So to idolize one specific body shape that may look like it's a lower body fat percentage is wrong. We should embrace the fact that 
health is the most important aspect and everybody's body fat percentage will be slightly different to get the absolute most out of themselves for performance. I honestly, I think I've had one or two people say that. Uh, I really don't think that's the general consensus. I think everybody sees this as the world champs, as they should. I was even, I was sort of thinking about this the other day and it, I guess it's a little bit like saying, is Tokyo 2021 not a true Olympics because it wasn't held in 2020? Or is it not a true Olympics because it's not Athens where the Olympics was first founded? I know it's slightly different because Kona has been the legacy, but I think part of, the, part of our sport and, and winning this race is about being fit enough to be on the start line. And it's such a fine line, it's so hard, um, but you have to be on the start line to win. So if you're not fit enough to be there on, you know, at 6.25, then you're not fit enough to win. So I think everybody in the competition, that, that's who you're racing and that's who you're racing for the World Championship title. Yeah, not a front pack swimmer. <laughs> um, I, I have been working on my swim, so I'm hoping that I'll be, in, I'll be in a good position to what perhaps I have been in the past. So I'm hoping to be in that f at the back of the front pack, I guess, knowing that there'll be a couple of people up the road, um, Fenella Language, Lisa Norden, um, but honestly, I'm hoping to make the most impact on the bike. Um, my biking's just progressing steadily every single three months at a time. It's getting better and better. And every, every week I'm setting myself new goals. So I'm hoping to come straight through on the bike, honestly. Um, and I hope to be in the lead um, with a healthy chunk of the race still to go uh, and get onto the run with, yeah, basically the capacity to run for the win and hopefully hopefully in a fun way not in a super stressful way i'd like i'd like to race with the buffer as everybody does but this is a world champs and i i'm prepared to be fighting for that last 5k down the hill to be honest in the run i think i've hit 100k this month <laughs> yeah um yeah i'm i'm happy with my run um the running is the hardest element of the sport obviously it's the trickiest to manage uh, load it's the trickiest to manage injuries but i think for me, I've found a really great balance of optimising swim and bike and the run for me is obviously a, it's an innate thing that I can manage quite uniquely. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the run. I always do because nothing can go wrong then. It's just you and your effort and putting the effort in and you know, going fast. So yeah, I just wanted to qualify for Kona. <laughs> no, uh, not in my wildest dreams that I think that I'd ever be genuinely starting a world champs thinking I'm gonna try and win this race um, yeah I mean I I thought a couple of years ago that qualifying would be a dream come true to be on the pro start line was like Phew, that's impressive and it is but now I've got bigger goals I guess <laughs>